Well, good morning to you all, ladies and gentlemen, families and friends. My name is Robin Sears, and on behalf of the Chairman of the Council of the Australian War Memorial, the Honourable Kim Beasley, the Director, Mr Matt Anderson, Council members and staff, welcome to this special place on this special day. Thank you for joining us this morning at the dedication of the sufferings of war and service sculpture for every drop shed in anguish. This ceremony is being held in the nation's capital on the traditional lands of the Ngunnawal people. The Australian War Memorial acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia. We recognise their continuing connection to land, sea and waters, and we pay our respect to elders past and present. As always, we acknowledge the many veterans who have served, those who are still serving, and especially their family and friends who love, support and care for them, many of whom are here with us today, with others watching the ceremony online from around Australia. I would also like to acknowledge the dignitaries, guests and members of the public joining us. Welcome to you all. We come together with different perspectives and experiences, yet with a common purpose, to acknowledge the impact of service on our veterans, on their families and their friends. Should you need a moment to pause, to take breath or to find a quiet space at any point during this morning's dedication, please do so. You are surrounded by people who understand and who care. To begin proceedings, it is my pleasure to invite Ngunnawal Elder Auntie Caroline Hughes to provide the welcome to country. Veterans and your families, ex-servicemen and your families, Yumayadong Gadba Dango Galanga Garalinya, Budanjima Marunjina Jima. Naraganawale Galamban Nanawari, on behalf of my Nanawal community and in the spirit of wellbeing and coming together, we particularly acknowledge you, the veteran community, and your families, as well as ex servicemen and your families. I'll pay respect to those that are no longer here, that are now in the dream time. Minister for Veterans Affairs and Defence Personnel the Honourable Matt Keogh, MP, Director of the Australian War Memorial, Mr Matt Anderson, PSM, Dr Karen Bird, Mr Ben Varanazzo, and the amazing artist, Alex Seton, council members and staff, and all of those watching from around Australia, Yuma, which means hello in the Ngunnawal language. I'd like to acknowledge other Ngunnawal elders here today, in particular Michael Bell and the work he does here at the War Memorial, Aunty Serena Williams standing next to me and Billy T, as well as all First Nations people and non-Indigenous people here with us. I pay respect to all your elders, both past and present. There is a beautiful ancient word of the Ngunnawal people, Gullamban, you, me, we together. And it has so much more meaning than you, those English words of you, me and we. It invokes a collective working together for the well-being of the whole group, a collective identity that is about building strong, effective and positive relationships. It's an emotional and evolving process that brings others on the journey by lifting them up. Galamban is best represented by your service to all of us across Australia. Ngunnawal as a collective have a strong sense of caring for our people and our communities, and that includes all of you. It includes in particular, the enlisted that felt a call to serve and defend Australia and all the communities within, and in doing so, caring for your fellow Australians in Gullumbum. Today, we honour you, and what a special honour that Alex has created for you. We honour you for your suffering caused by war and service. And I want you to know we see you and we see your families and we hear you for the profound changes and losses in your lives, but also 
for your survival. And we recognise with Yinjamar, with respect, passion and care, on behalf of the Ngunnawal community and the words of our ancestors, Yimulundi Darawara Ngunnawari Darawari Galamban, Budanjima Maranjima Balanjima, Yangu Nalawiri Dunimanyan Galamban, Yarabinyan Naragana Yili Yinjilin, Marabiji Malangari Yinjila, Yinjamar, Yinjamar everyone, Yimulundi Narawari Darawari, and what I have said to you in our beautiful ancient language, whose people were the very first footprints in this place, whose people were the first voices here. This place is our ancestors' spiritual homeland, and together with you, we are keeping the pathways of our ancestors alive, keeping alive an ancient practice since time immemorial, a sign of respect, a practice that invokes spiritual blessings for a safe gathering for all. In closing, I would like to also acknowledge the Honourable Kim Beasley in the audience here today and acknowledge you in the work that you have done across Australia and across the many lands of the world, Jan Yimaba. I am now proud to introduce Auntie Serena Williams to explain the beautiful smoking ceremony and Serena will also introduce the Ngunnawal Yukonbrook Dreaming Dancers, a very special performance here today. Jan Yimaba, thank you. Thank you, uh, Auntie Caroline. Um, it's always an honour to be standing beside my people, but also an honour to be here today, and I'd like to pay my respects to all the, the, that are here today, and the dignitaries, and the artists, the veterans. I'd like to uh, introduce a smoking ceremony. We had a smoking ceremony as you've come down the pathway, and that was uh, about paying respect to the elders past, our ancestors to the land that you walk on today, but also a blessing to keep you safe, keep you spiritually safe. I'd like to introduce um, Yukonbrak Dreaming, Ngunnawal Yukonbrak Dreaming. Yukonbrak is the crow. Yukonbrak, wak wak. The messenger, the messenger of the Ngunnawal people. This is in honour of mine and my eldest brother, William Tompkins' brother who was the first Ngunnawal man back to the ACT in the early 60s. And uh, we just continue to grow with, with strength and pride and, and show that culture is alive and well. Alex and veterans and all that are in attendance today will be doing three, three dances. And we do this in honour of the tears, sweat and blood for all. And we do the Yeramura. The Yeramura is opening of the pathways. Hello, to come, to sweep in the pathways for you to leave your footprints here on beautiful Ngunnawal country. We will then continue with the Najan dance. Najan is water. And we dance about the cleansing in the waters of the Royal, the Murrumbidgee, the Malonglo, the Gudjumbi and Jinanderi. And then Malian. Malian is the Wedgetail Eagle, the totem of the Ngunnawal people, and we will do the Malian dance. Very honoured, and we're, we're all honoured to be here today to participate in, in a, beautiful, a beautiful event in memory and in suffering of pain of many. Thank you. I'll introduce you to my oldest brother, William Tompkins, Songman. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna put it, put it down. Yeah. So the first dance is the uh, Yeramura sweeping of the, the dirt. Yeramura! Push! Boro! Yeramura! Yeramura! Not a wall, do da, my body. Get him out of my, my, my body. Not a wall, do da, not a wall, do da, my bomb, be ji, one body. My bomb, be ji, one body. Get him out. 
Get him up on uh, Monday. Get him up. Right there. Thank you. Naja, man and Betty. Naja, na, Naja, na, man, man, Betty, man, man, Betty, man, 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 Naja, what am I about, Madam Biji? What? So, we need the baby back. <laughs> <laughs> She's one of the props. <laughs> So this is the Malian dance. Yeah. I'll sing and narrate through this so you know what it's all about. It's about the um, little eagles in the Malian dance, uh, in the Malian nest, and they're learning to fly. And then they go out with the, the adult eagles, and then they um, fly around, get to learn. Yeah, all the way. And then uh, they come back to the nest, and they nest for the for the evening with the uh, older Malians protecting them. Maliana, Malane, Malamana, Maliamana. So all the little eaglets are out of the nest now, and they're learning how to fly. Now the little eagles are getting a bit tired now, so they're heading back to the nest. The evening's coming upon us. And it's time to go to sleep. And then the older ones come in and put their wings around them to protect them. Malianani, Malianani, Wulamari. Yay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hope you all enjoy your day. We are very honoured to be here to honour this beautiful art, but also everyone out there today. So, Malian. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Auntie Caroline, Auntie Serena, and the members of the Nunawal Yukonbrak Dreaming for that wonderful blessing and welcome. Is your heart warm already? The director of the Australian War Memorial, Mr. Matt Anderson, will now welcome you to the memorial. Thank you, Robin. And thank you, Arnie Serena. Their Excellencies, the Governor General and Mrs. Hurley, the Assistant Minister for Veterans Affairs and Assistant Minister for Defence, the Honourable Matt Thistlethwaite, the Shadow Minister for Veterans Affairs, 
Barnaby Joyce and our former Minister for the Veterans Affairs, um, Darren Chester, the Chief of our Defence Force, General Campbell, to the Vice Chief of the Defence Force, Admiral Johnson, to the Chief of the Army, General Stewart, Service Chiefs, the Chairs and the Commissioners of the Royal Commission into Defence and to Veterans Suicide, and to the Secretary of DVA, Alison Frame. And of course, to me, the members of my council, the Chairman, the Honourable Kim Beasley, Rhonda Van Zeller, who's also the former National President of Australian War Widows, and Glenn Keyes. And Auntie Caroline Hughes, thank you for your welcome. Um, we are honoured to have you here and to be welcomed in such a way. But to me, to the remarkable and indeed heroic members of the Stakeholder Committee, and to all those who have been affected by their service and the service of a loved one, you are why we're here. And we pause to remember those who are no longer with us. Those of you who have served, to those of you who are still serving, and to the families who love and support them. Because when a soldier, a sailor or an aviator enlists and ticks that box marked unrestricted service, what also happens is they conscript a family. The families in all their forms, the husbands, the wives, the partners, the brothers, the sisters, the blended families, the mums, the dads, even the grandparents, who so often have to step up and step in to provide support to those who have or who are serving. Please know that this is where you belong and it is hoped that here at the Australian War Memorial you will find very soon in our expanded galleries and certainly here in the gardens the recognition and the meaning that you so richly deserve. My only responsibility here today is to acknowledge and honour the stakeholder committee that has led us to this groundbreaking installation. They're listed on the backs of your program. However, they're worthy of being called out and singled out. And that's why, by the way, we've dispensed with the usual protocols for memorial events and parked them all in the front row. I'd ask you to think for a moment as I read their names about their brief, which was to commission a sculpture that would provide a welcoming and a meaningful place at the Australian War Memorial to those who have experienced or witnessed the trauma that can result from service and for visitors to the memorial to reflect on that service and that experience. And the only way we could do that was to draw upon their lived experience. It's been a painful, possibly cathartic, but as you can see today, a remarkable, successful achievement. I must start with the chair of the committee, my colleague and veteran, retired Major General Brian Dawson. Brian, thank you for leading the committee at the pace and in the direction that proved comfortable for them all. Now, I don't play favourites here, so I've opted out and gone for alphabetical, all right? <laughs> Dr Karen Bird, mother of Jesse Bird, an Australian Army veteran who died by suicide, and we'll hear from Karen shortly. Kate Bird, the sister of Jesse and Connie Boglas OAM. And Connie, congratulations again on the OAM, which she received in the most recent Australia Day Honours List. She's a counsellor, she's an author and a mental health advocate, and she's the former partner of Jessie. And to Gwen Scherner, currently on leave from her duties as Veteran Family Health Advocate Commissioner in DVA. She's the widow of Peter Cafe, an Australian Army veteran who died by suicide. Amy Cooper, CEO of Soldier On. Ben Farinazzo, a veteran, a dual gold medalist in Victus Games, ambassador and an advocate for mental health, who will also speak shortly. To Lieutenant General Natasha Fox, Chief of Personnel for the ADF. Penny Looker, Australian Army veteran and PTSD sufferer. Pat McCabe, OAM, President of the Australian Federation of Totally and Permanently Incapacitated Ex-Service Men and Women. Leonie Nolan, the First Assistant Secretary for Open Arms in DVA. Laura Webster, the Head of Art at the Australian War Memorial and your remarkable staff. And if I could sneak in a mention too, to our wonderful building services who made this happen and to the event staff that are working behind the scenes today. And of course to Alex, to Alex Seaton, for your dedication and for your sensitivity in realising this commission, which is both contemporary 
and I have every belief will prove timeless. The Australian War Memorial was conceived by Charles Bean as a place where families could grieve and mourn loved ones buried in foreign shores. It would also be a place where all Australians could come to understand what these men and women had endured and what they and their families had done for us. This sculpture invites all Australians to contemplate what the men and women of the ADF and their families have, and in many cases still endure, and what's been asked of them in training for and conduct of the defence of our values and our freedoms. It's been said that some patients look at a scar and that they're most often reminded of the wound. When a doctor looks at the same scar, they see a body's capacity to heal. May this remarkable sculpture and its perfect imperfections remind us that not all scars are visible and that over a time, a scar can, like these marble droplets of blood, of sweat and of tears, come to represent resilience, strength, hope and healing. Now, as I go, I just do note there's one slight typo in this, uh, you know, this, the CVE, my, my staff panic when I say that. There's a slight typo. It talks to this as a dedication ceremony. It's not a dedication ceremony, it's a rededication ceremony. When Lord Gowrie VC opened the Australian War Memorial on Remembrance Day 1941, he said the challenge of this institution was to make sure that when people leave here, they utter never again. So to those of us in positions of leadership, and I thank each of you for being here today and for owning this, we must rededicate ourselves to addressing the causes of every drop that has been shed in anguish and to dedicate ourselves, to rededicate ourselves to utter never again. Thank you. Thank you, Director. I would now like to invite the Honourable Matt Thistlethwaite to the lectern. Today, the Assistant Minister is representing the Minister for Veterans Affairs and Defence Personnel, the Honourable Matt Keogh. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I acknowledge that we're on Ngunnawal land and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. And thank you, Annie Caroline and the dancers for welcoming us to country. I acknowledge all of the many distinguished guests, in particular, Your Excellency, the Governor-General, David Hurley and Mrs Hurley, members of the Sculpture Commission Committee, and especially our veterans and serving members of the Australian Defence Forces. And I thank you for your service to our nation. I'm proud to dedicate this new sculpture on behalf of the Australian people in recognition of those who have suffered as a result of their service to our nation. Alex Seaton's sculpture for every drop shed in anguish lays like a spray of droplets before us. A bead of sweat, a fallen tear, a drop of blood. Symbols of the pain, the hardships and sacrifices made by our service personnel and their families who support them. These seemingly delicate marble spheres grasp a deeper strength, immediately apparent when you lay a hand on their smooth surface. They speak not only of the toll service demands on those who wear our uniform, but also of their fortitude to heal and carry on. And this is just as true of their families. Because along with the anxiety that comes from having a loved one serve, families are often called upon to be their primary support, their advocate, even their carer. More than anyone else, families bear witness to the trauma that can result from service. For some, this can be felt for generations. Though these burdens often go unseen, they nevertheless represent a great weight borne by many. I want you to know that we see you, we hear you, we support you. 
Thank you to the members of the Sculpture Commission Committee whose tireless work has brought this project to fruition. You, along with countless other veterans and families, have been powerful voices advocating not only for this sculpture, but to bring these many issues to the fore, to better discuss and understand these challenges, to see the hidden scars and acknowledge their causes and consequences, to fight for the recognition and support that our veterans and their families deserve. Even after the uniform is hung up for the last time, experiences of war and service can cling fast to the heart and haunt the mind. Many carry those burdens for the rest of their life. For others, they have cost them theirs. For each person lost to suicide, there's a ripple of pain across the community from those who love them most to their friends and comrades in arms. Each a new drop of anguish. A tight-knit community taught to operate as one, heartbroken. The rate of veteran suicide in Australia is a national tragedy. A tragedy that successive Australian governments have failed to act upon to care for our nation's veterans. For that, we are truly, truly sorry. That's why the Royal Commission into Defence and Veteran Suicide is so important. It's a significant moment in our nation's history, which will better support our veteran community into the future, helping to ensure that the tragedies of the past can never be repeated. In that mission, memorials like this are an important expression of the hardship that service can bring. They stand as an enduring reminder of the impact that service has on individuals and families. Blood may be wiped away, sweat evaporates, tears dry, but the pain those wounds leave behind can remain as solid and permanent as though they were carved from stone. This memorial will provide a place of quiet contemplation for veterans, their families, and for generations to come. A place that highlights the trauma that can come from service, both seen and unseen. A place to commemorate those who sacrificed for our nation, both uniformed and civilian. A place to remind all those who pass among its silent forms of the eternal cost and consequences that service carries and how that cost can be born through generations, lest we forget. Thank you, Minister. It is now my pleasure to invite artist Alex Seaton to speak of his inspiration and the creative process for Every Drop Shed in Anguish. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, Robin, and hello, everyone. Thank you for having me here today to say a few words about the Sculpture Commission. It's been a long journey to get here. I first wanted to thank you all for the trust you've placed in me with this, the trust to create something that acknowledges so many different experiences of service and its aftermath. The brief was at first incredibly daunting, hearing of the many stories of loved ones, loved ones with injuries and wounds, of those with ongoing physical and mental trauma, and those still that struggle and are slowly healing, and for their many carers, family, and loved ones. There are far too many who have lost a loved one to suicide. It was deeply intimidating like it was almost far too much for one artwork to hold. That service comes with an enormous cost, a cost that hasn't been acknowledged enough. And then what struck me was the blood, sweat and tears present in each and every one of their stories. And from that, I started to think of the droplet form. 
Every droplet has a unique shape, defined by its delicate surface tension as if about to burst. Capturing these forms and the durable material of marble meant that they could have an inner strength and a resilience that revealed itself when touched. And then that could provide at least a promise and a hope of healing. And so for every drop in anguish came into being. Not a singular heroic monument, but a grouping, a family of droplets spread on the grass, a place to be walked amongst. The Queensland pearl marble was chosen from Chiligo on the traditional lands of the Wakaman peoples. I have used it before in my work as of, as of today inside the War Memorial. It has unique warm tones with striking bands of blood red iron, like wounds across the large crystals. When I first traveled to meet with the Cairns Marble Quarry family, they were surprised to hear I wasn't interested in the commercial grade white pearl, uh, but rather the rejected warm pearl with its many scars and imperfections. They told me of the unique conditions of the land that slow cools over millions of years to form the large crystals that makes this material so special. To me, it is one of the most interesting and beautiful of stones. There is not, nothing quite like it anywhere on the earth. There are so many people to thank in the creation of this work. First, I would like to thank the many staff at the War Memorial, but in particular, Dr. Anthea Gunn. As project lead, she has steered the many contributors and stakeholders with understanding and care, and kept the project on track through Queensland monsoonal weather and a global pandemic. This project would never have happened without Anthea's patience and level advice to me at every step of the way. Thank you, Anthea. A big thanks to War Memorial Director Matt Anderson and former director, Dr. Brendan Nelson. To Head of Art, Laura Webster, and curator Elise Rutledge for their care and vigilance. To Carolyn and Andrew Spalger of Cairns Marble in their guidance and selection of the stone. To my team, who unfortunately all couldn't be here, got them hardworking. Uh, Mitchell Ferry, Gaspar Moscone, Alexandra Neville, and Emma O'Neill, who tire tirelessly polished stone and PDFs with me. To Simon Bethune of Number 17 Design for the beautiful furniture so important in making this a place of contemplation. An enormous thanks goes to Mitch Alcorn and the team of Gorilla Constructions for their unflagging efforts in the milling and engineering of the stones. Theirs was the lion's share in the production of this work. To Heritage Stone New South Wales and Vagabond Cranes for the cutting and handling of the blocks to Joanna Strumpf of Sullivan and Strumpf Gallery for all of her guidance, and to mum and dad and my family. And a special thank you goes to George Fredrickson, who drove our first stones down from Queensland. And as an army veteran, upon hearing what these stones were to be for, insisted upon driving all the marble down himself. Though at the time I never told him so, Long conversations with George gave me the confidence that the project was heading in the right direction. Thank you for that, George. For all the families and veterans I had the honor of working with on this, thank you. Thank you to the Bird family who first approached me with their story and to advocate for the many families who've lost loved ones because of their service. To Penny Looker and Ben Farinazzo, and the many veterans who have shared their experiences openly and honestly with us. To everyone on the committee working with the memorial on this project, I thank each and every one of you for your guidance. I think we've made something truly special. This artwork is just one step in your stories being heard. It is only the frame for meaningful conversations around the mental and physical health of our veterans followed by genuine action. This artwork is a constant reminder that in this, we can do better. This is not another monument to war, but an important and overdue recognition of the true cost of service. Thank you.
thank you, Alex, for sharing your personal insights and for creating this beautiful sculpture, which will stand in the grounds of the Australian War Memorial for generations to come. Music across the ages has been a way to contemplate and express emotions and experiences. Emotions of helplessness and devastation, resilience and compassion, of loss and of love and of hope. Since its initial release in 1982, one such song, written by Stephen Prestwich of Cold Chisel, has become a timeless anthem that continues to resonate with many veterans, their families and their loved ones. Ladies and gentlemen, here to perform the song When the War is Over, please welcome Mr Ian Moss. Good morning, this is an honour. My bags to no place in no time, no day. You and I, we used each other's shoulder. Still so young, but somehow so much older. How can I go home and not get blown away? I've got plans for more than a wanted man And all around is chaos and madness I can't help feeling nothing more than sadness Only choice is to face it the best that I can When the war is over, got to start again Try to hold a trace of what it was back then You and I, we told each other stories Just a taste I'm lost in all the story How can I go home and not get blown away? Ain't nobody gonna steal this heart away Ain't nobody gonna steal this heart away Ain't no 
somebody gonna steal this heart away? Thank you. Thank you, Ian, for that moving performance of a song that many of us know and love. I would now like to invite our stakeholder committee to come forward. This committee is composed of veterans, family members, and invested organisations, all who have worked tirelessly alongside memorial staff in the development and establishment of this sculpture and today's dedication. We will hear from two committee members. Firstly, may I introduce Dr Karen Bird. Karen's son, Jesse, served in the Australian Army in Afghanistan before dying by suicide in 2017. Karen has since advocated to increase awareness and improve the lives of veterans and their families. Good morning, everybody. Before I start, I would like to say this speech has been long in my contemplation and I deliver it with great respect to everybody here. But it does have a really hard message for the Australian government, the Australian bureaucracy that su supports that government of the day, uh, to the, I guess, to the hierarchy of the Australian Defence Force, and most importantly, to all serving and to all the serving and veteran community, because what we have achieved as a group has been so long in the making. And so I, I'll begin my speech and I hope everybody is really listening to what I've got to say. Today we meet in friendship and purpose without recognition of rank or generation. I acknowledge and I pay right my respects to all Australians who call Australia their home. I acknowledge all those who have come before me, stand here beside me, and importantly, all those who share our inclination and made the effort to join us in person here today or online. And I know there are many people out there online and I'm really, really pleased to be able to speak to you today. As an intellectual historian, I share the thoughts of a British scholar who I hold very dear, Tony Judd, who holds that as citizens of a free society, we have a duty to look critically on our world. Philosophers across time are known to interpret the word, world in just words. But the real point is, if we see the need for change and we want to speak to change, we must act for it with accountability and transparency in our actions and in our intentions. We acknowledge that change can only be built on what we have and what we know. And the Australian War Memorial is what we have. A monument built to the dead, built in the aftermath of World War I to honour those killed in war or because of their service. We know that there are over 106,200 names listed on the honour and commemorative rolls here at the War Memorial. Those who have been killed in action died because of illness or their wounds, were missing and presumed dead due to the absence of a physical body. 
Among these names are those of only 453 servicemen and women recognised by the Australian War Memorial who, have, who are known to have died by suicide, caused or linked to their service. And I look at Mr Kaldos, to Penny Brown and to Commissioner Douglas and I say this, the Royal Commission into military and veteran suicide is currently building on that knowledge and we now know that there are many more who have died to suicide linked to their service. And those names need to be added to the Australian War Memorial and commemorative roles. Mid 20th century English essayist, another man that I hold dear, George Elwell, recognised that change always requires struggle, writing that to see what is in front of our noses needs constant struggle. Such a struggle has been shared, has been the shared lived experience of literally hundreds of thousands of Australian family members, carers and their friends, of serving and ex-serving men and women since Federation. I stand here as a very proud member of a committee formed out of struggle seeking change. A committee not initiated by any government, but insisted upon by the fierce voices of lived experience who stood on the barricades and on the shoulders of many who have fallen before them. After years of advocacy, after enduring years of suffering and loss. We acknowledge we found one another in our deepest grief. And in that acknowledgement, we demanded acknowledgement of that suffering and loss and a place here at the Australian War Memorial. And today, Alex, your sculpture acknowledges that struggle, that suffering and that loss. It provides that place for the family members, carers and friends, and it provides a place for serving members and veterans to come and reflect on their own suffering, their own grief, for their own personal struggles and for the friends they have lost and who remain unrecorded here. I would personally like to recognise the many parents, family members, carers and friends who stand beside me and before me here today, touched by the same hand of grief. We are a formidable group of human beings. Your names are too many for me to mention here today, but no, I'm speaking to you all. There are too many names and there are too many people that I now hold dear to me. I close today with a clear voice of appreciation to the Director of the Australian War Memorial, Matt Anderson. It's been a pleasure to work with you these last years. And a nod of appreciation and recognition to your predecessor, Brendan Nelson. Matt is ably assisted by a dedicated team Brian Dawson, Anthea Gunn, Laura Webster, Elise Rutledge, and all your many, many colleagues. And I express a deep gratitude on behalf of all the committee to Alex Seaton. To everyone, thank you for helping us to build on what we now know, finally being able to express that knowledge that without fear or no longer whispering. War and service can and does have consequences, and it does come home. The human toll is all around us, in front of our eyes, and this struggle is now recognised, but that struggle remains ongoing. For as long as the flux and woe of human frailty returns us to war to set a, settle our petty differences and our competing interests, we as a nation will be required to account to those who so freely sign on a defence service contract and we place in harm's way in our names. 
that responsibility falls heavily on us all. As a nation, we have waxed and waned in that responsibility. But from this day forward, for every drop shed in anguish, this will be a constant reminder to us all that responsibility of that responsibility, especially up at Australian Parliament House and in the offices of DVA and Civic. Ignorance or disbelief or mismanagement is no longer a defence. And I will close with one final comment because I will, and I'm an intellectual historian, and I stand on the shoulders of many historians and philosophers before me, and one of whom is one that I hold very dear, and his name is a French philosopher, Voltaire. And he said, to the living we owe respect, but to the dead we owe only the truth. Thanks very much for listening. Thank you, Karen. Our next speaker, Mr. Ben Farinazzo, served in the Australian Army and overcame significant mental and physical health challenges to later represent Australia at the Invictus Games. Today, he is an ambassador and advocate for mental health and other veterans. Ben. Uh, good morning, everyone. Cracker morning. Be happy to know I'm the last speaker. That's right, Robin. Yep, thumbs up. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful to see everyone here today. Um, thank you for the opportunity to share a few words on behalf of our extraordinary committee. Um, before I do, I'd like to recognise the strong and resilient veteran community that we have in this country and encourage them to continue to support those among our ranks that aren't doing so well. Alex. I'd like to acknowledge you, mate, for this magnificent sculpture, the first of its kind at the Australian War Memorial. Thanks. We would also like to acknowledge a very special group of people. We've done it a couple of times this morning. Um, they've sh shared the journey with us every step of the way. Without their dedication, compassion and support, we would not be here today. Could you please join me in thanking the wonderful team of the Australian War Memorial? We will remember them. That's what we say. We will remember them. Yet many feel forgotten. Here, at the heart of the Australian War Memorial, we remember those who have fallen. As Karen touched on, the Roll of Honour over there consists of a long series of bronze panels recording the names of over 103,000 members of the Australian Armed Forces who have died during or as a result of their service. Attention is rightly given to those who died during war. However, there are many that have survived and are left suffering physical and psychological wounds. And there are also many that have seen and unseen wounds as a result of their service. Many of them have not been acknowledged and many have felt forgotten. There are those who suffer physical wounds, those who have served and wear pins, not only on their chests, but in their knees, in their shoulders, in their backs, from jumping in and out of vehicles, ships, subs, aircraft, to lifting and lugging equipment, see a few nods, to being shot at, blown up or smashed up in some bloody accident somewhere. Those with ringing ears, choking chests, missing limbs, acquired brain injuries, strokes, broken bones and blown up bodies, living with the knowledge that many of these scars will serve as constant reminders of discomfort, disfigurement and pain. We acknowledge you. This sculpture serves to remind us that you are not forgotten. 
There are those that suffer psychological wounds. Those who have served and carry not only packs, but anguish, trauma, incessant nightmares, panic attacks, anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Labelled for unseen injuries, when left untreated, they can spread like cancer, consuming the mind, tearing apart relationships and destroying lives. Now, many have found ways to reclaim their lives, but they will remain forever changed. Many have battled shame and guilt to seek help, only to be turned away and left feeling as though they've been tossed to the curb and abandoned, not only by those that have, they have served with, but by the country that they have fought for. And tragically, some after carrying the sufferings of war and service way too long, way too far, having fought a bloody good fight, have died by suicide. As mentioned earlier, this is a national disaster and in many cases could have been prevented. We as a committee acknowledge the efforts of those to bring about the much needed change at the same time knowing that it's never going to bring back our children, our loved ones or our mates. There is so much more that needs to be done. We acknowledge you. This sculpture serves to remind us that you are not forgotten. These dew-like marble droplets spread across these green waves remind us of the ripple effect that it has on our families, our loved ones, our friends, our kids, and the profound impact on our communities, our country, and future generations. You know, those who check on their friends and loved ones daily, making sure that they've just showered and eaten those who reach out to friends because they've reached wit's end and they don't know what to do anymore. Those that just need a space to cry and cry and cry so they can wipe back the tears and step back into the house and get dinner ready. To all of you, have tried and tried and tried and nothing seems to work and you feel empty and alone having lost that loved one forever. We acknowledge you all, every single one of you. And this sculpture serves to remind us that you and them are not forgotten. And when you move over here a bit later on, for some of you this sculpture will represent a place to grieve and a timeless reminder of the long-term cost of war and service. For some, the stunning white and red veins of iron ore, iron ore, that's right, yep, reflect their journey of blood, sweat and tears. Perhaps a place of peace, solitude and reflection. For some, touching these beautiful droplets, which we, which we encourage, of discarded marble, reveals an inner strength, a resilience, and the gleaming light off the surface that you can start to see now, surrounded by these trees and singing birds, brings with it a promise of hope and healing. So let me conclude by saying this. We acknowledge that everyone's life experience is different, and that everyone moves through the suffering of war and service in their own way, at their own pace. We have learnt that the blood, sweat and tears shed by those who have served and their loved ones is best done with the support, recognition and the embrace of the community. And whereas in the past there was no place for acknowledgement, no place for our community, for us, 
to come together at the War Memorial to recognise the sufferings of war and service, we are grateful that we now have this new sculpture, aptly titled, For Every Drop Shed in Anguish, to bring our community together. A place and sculpture that serves to remind us that we, our families, our loved ones, our friends, our mates, are not forgotten. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Ladies and gentlemen, the Australian War Memorial would like to thank you all for joining us this morning for the dedication of For Every Drop Shed in Anguish. To conclude today's proceedings, harpist Alice Giles and members of the Skullthorpe String Quartet will perform. As the committee members lead all guests in placing personal tributes or poppies around the marble droplets. <laughs> 